So dear students and uh, viewers, this is Professor Dr. Zia Ahmed once again uh, here to teach the and uh, discuss and interpret scene two of uh, the drama Dream on Monkey Mountain by Derek Walcott. Uh, I may remind my viewers and students that uh, I have already recorded two lectures. One was on the introduction of this drama and secondly it was on scene one. And uh, so this one is about scene two. So therefore in order to understand uh, scene two, especially for those who are watching it right now for the first time, they should first go to these two videos. They, are, uh, they should watch and see first of all the, uh, you know, uh, the scene two, scene one and the introduction of the drama only then they can have a good understanding of uh, this this drama so uh, you know this scene two is going to start right now and uh, scene two as you know is the is the very brilliant scene in the same way as it was scene one or as it was the other introductions about this drama uh, this drama dream on monkey mountain is an african text and written in the post-colonial context so therefore it's going to be something really very brilliant very great and uh, let's have a start with this scene too uh, this drama teaching is also for the students of namal uh, ma in english multan campus because i have been teaching them and uh, so they can also get a benefit out of that uh, don't bother about the date which is put there in red. Actually, it should begin from scene two. And uh, I have already uh, green colored the lines which I want to teach uh, here in this video. This is the type of introduction of the scene where uh, let's have a reading of this part of the scene. There's a sound of wailing, white robed women, members of sisterhood bearing torches swirl onto the stage which is now a country road behind them carrying a shrouded sick man in a bamboo hammock are four bearers and a tall frock coated man in black silk hat basil his face half by white makeup the sisters shaking their heads dancing solemnly and singing form a circle described by the leader the bearers turn and rest the sick man down and around him the sisters kneel and pray swaying trying to exorcise the sickness a small fire is lit by the bearers the silk hatted man stands back quietly waiting while the sisters clap and sing so this is the opening of scene two is very much african because we can see that the people are having colored faces and the sisters are there and they are carrying this somebody and everybody is singing some type of song so that's the kind of introduction given to us and we see that one man is sick and uh, people are carrying the body of that sick man and then they put it on the ground and uh, the uh, the kind of chorus or, or the song is continuing around the sick man in an effort to release the sick man of the disease which he is possibly possessing. Uh, these sisters are having torches as well. They swirl onto the stage and as a result they are uh, displaying a scene of uh, some kind of tragedy or death. There is another person described here and that is Basil. He is the man who is responsible for uh, preparing of uh, the coffins, the wood coffins, which uh, uh, which is like his appearances in the same way as the appearance of certain kites and vultures happen. And people say that somebody has possibly died. That is why the kites and vultures are in the sky. And same is the case with Basil, that if he is present somewhere, it means that somebody has died and he is there to prepare the coffin, the wooden coffin for him. So in that way, he is a symbol of terror. He is a symbol of uh, this type of arrangement which he makes at the dead body. So in this way, uh, this, this uh, Basil is present there. But he's having his uh, white uh, makeup on half of his face. So in that way also, it is African style that we are finding here. Uh, same is the case with the other people who are also dancing, singing in the same way as most of the African people would do. So therefore, the text is going to be very much African, portraying the culture of Africa. And this is the type of introduction to the scene as we find uh, sometime uh, on the introductions as it happened that uh, there the dramatist describes what are the things on the stage and uh, what is the up the stage, down the stage, right the stage and left the stage. Similarly, this type of thing has been talked about as an introduction to the scene. Let's go down and see what other things are present. Sisters are singing the song in order to cure the man from the disease. And by the way, let me see, uh, let me tell you people that this uh, 
this is something like uh, the snake bit biting situation that the man has been stung by the snake and no medicine is working on him and as a result he is in trouble. Besides Basil and besides a group of singing, another man who is Mustique. Uh, and uh, let me remind all my viewers that Mustique is the friend of Macaque and uh, he is a type of uh, very much dependent person as well. He's very much a poor person as well and in search of some kind of money if he can find out. So that's why he's present here as well. He enters into the stage and sees these people uh, who are singing the song and having a red body. When he enters, he is put a type of question and the question is here once again, the grain, where you come from, stranger? Now at the four, at the hour of our death man, uh, it means that uh, people are very much uh, surprised when they see a stranger among them who has come on the stage and they ask him a question why he's present there. Mystique says to them from Monkey Mountain and Forest here, quarter and forgive us our trespasses, I mean, is me my friend and old man in the name of the father and uh, we were sleeping in a hut by the road there when we see all you all coming with all those lights, they thought it was the devil. He says that he doesn't know what is happening here so that's why out of curiosity when he was sleeping Along with his uh, friend, the uh, old man, he says that on the Monkey Mountain they were present. When they saw these people, uh, he came down in order to see what's going on because he thought something mysterious may be there, so that's why he's down in order to see that. So entry of mystique takes place here and we need to see what he discusses with the first peasant and the second peasant. He continues in that way, talk to the peasants that according to him, he's going to come there in order to uh, gave his full introduction along with his full introduction he also would suggest something about the deeds of a man for example let's see this paragraph here Mustique for example says uh, look I know an old man uh, he been living in the forest he knew all the herbs plants bush he have this power and glory and if you want and it have no harm in that I could fetch him for you look before you pick him again before you choke him with that stinking medicine before Basil, the cabinet maker, get another job for ever and ever. I mean, just something to eat and I will go and fetch him. He don't want no money, but he could cure this sick man. So here is Mustique making a deal with these people, trying to tell them that there's an old man, definitely this macaque. According to him, this man who's been bitten by the snake will not be cured by any power. Yes, that man, macaque, has got some power. He can come down and he will get no money and only he will be willing to have some food from them, nothing else, and he will be curing that man. So in that way, Mustique tries to convince them and he refers to Basil as well, who's standing there, that he won't get in the job. I mean, the man won't die and he will not be preparing any type of coffin and this is what he tries to convince them with by saying that this thing can happen if you don't invite that old man macaque there. So he introduces macaque in such a way as if macaque is a special person bestowed with powers where no medicine is working, no plants are working, no people are working. The uh, efforts in the power of macaque will work definitely and that's why he introduces them. In that way, he is making a deal with these people. These people agree with him with reluctancy and ultimately goes and brings macaque there. For example, Mustique again says to these people here, they are master, hurriedly gesticulating, eating the bread, he removes his hat, here he is, my master. I have explained everything, go ahead master. So macaque enters there on the stage as well because Mustique has brought him in order to show these people what they are doing and what they need. Then Makar comes and says, let all who want this man to heal, kneel down. I ask you, kneel. They kneel after some delay, except one or two men whom Mystique gently forces down. So in a very traditional African way of prayer making, and of course this uh, this style may be very popular among the whole parts of the world as well, that Makar enters and says that if you want that these people that this gentleman should be healed of the snake biting, then everybody is required to go into a posture, which is a requesting posture, prayer posture, that is kneeling down. Macaque orders everybody to do so, and everybody does so reluctantly though, but one or two people do not do so because they're not ready to believe on him. The reason being that Macaque is not wearing any priestly dress, any magical dress, or any other kind of uniform, which may prove that he is a very learned person, or he is going to have some uh, powers given by God. He is not looking like that. So therefore people do not try to follow him immediately. He has to convince and Mystique has to convince them for doing so. So that's why reluctantly people are kneeling down. Uh, Macaque's appearance is definitely the appearance of a very poor man, a type of ugly man as well. As the text tells us, he doesn't appear like a very, uh, very much priest of any religion. And so that is why uh, he's not that welcomed by the uh, people or the peasants who are present there. 
So in that way, the kneeling position has been obtained and a lot of lines has been used by the writer in order to let us know that what kind of efforts macaque has been making. He is holding, macaque has been holding a type of coal in his hand, burning coal rather, and he was praying to gods and that, so that the burning coal uh, may bring some type of healing. Uh, and the healing would come only when the sweating takes place on the body of that man who is lying sick, but the uh, but nothing happens. And as a result, everybody is upset. More so is Mustique very much upset. That is why when no change comes in the condition of that man, who is lying snake bitten? Macaque is uh, meeting, is going to meet a type of failure at that time. Mustique becomes very angry. So he says, furious at the failure and frightened, he circulates among them angrily. Faith, faith, what happens to you? You didn't hear the man, you ain't hear the master sing, sing. Come on, Joseph, as like, let that forehead shine, boy, sing. But the singing peters out. Macaque broken moves away from the body. He looks at his dry pan. So in that way, Mustique is also upset. Macaque is also upset that no change is taking place. So the powers which were claimed by Macaque, the, the, the feeling is like that, he is failing. But Mystique is very clever at that time. He puts the blame upon the peasants and farmers by saying them that their faith is very weak. Because the weakness of the faith, it's not happening that the cure should take place. So that's why he makes them, advises them to make their faith strong and continue singing in order to arouse the interest of the guard so that the uh, magic which Macaque wants to do may be done. And as a result, it will be possible for them to uh, cure the man. So that is why he advised them to sing, sing, and continue to sing as well. And after some time, when both have been discussing a lot of women, which is the wife of that uh, snake bitten man, goes close to him, and she cries out immediately by saying that he is sweating. She uses the word, I sweat, I sweat, I sweat. Uh, so that goes to show that the kind of sweat which was expected out of Macaque's treatment that has come. Macaque and Mystique return and they see that the there is a kind of sweating going on and the woman is going to do that all. And as a result, the sweating has started. The, the start of the sweating means that actually the patient will be cured of the snake bite because uh, he's in fever. And that sweating means that the fever will go down and as a result, the treatment will be okay. So in that way, one chance has been created by the dramatist in order to show what is the role of the chance. Uh, now, it was a place where Macaque could be bitten even, where Mystique could be bitten even because they were claiming something and they were claiming food from them as well. The peasants, therefore, uh, would be very angry with him if the cure is not coming. So, by chance, the cure has come. The man has started to sweat and that is why Macaque has been saved and Mystique has gotten the chance in order to talk to the people that look how Macaque has got the power and everybody is to obey that power as well. For example, let's go forward and see how does Mystique uh, try to justify his actions by saying, Ah, uh, ah, uh, you see all you. Ain't white priest come and nothing happened. Ain't white doctor come and was agony still. Ain't you take bush medicine and no sweat broke. No sweat break. White medicine, bush medicine, not one of them work. White prayers, black prayers, and still no deliverance. And who healed the man? Macaque. Macaque healed the man. All your deliverance lie in that man. That man's God messenger. So further the cause, brothers and sisters. Uh, he opens a hover sack and holds it before him. Further the cause. Drop what you have in there. Look, look, Joseph is walking. Next thing he will dance. They laugh. The wife makes him do a little dance. I tell you, he dancing. God's work must be done and lit. Like St. Peter's self, Mystique, that's me, is secretary to Traitor. So in that way, uh, Mystique has become very active at this moment because he knows that now the time has come to get the money from the peasants, for example, he says and tells them and repeats and justifies this case by saying that no uh, effort of the peasants could save the man. For example, he says not the white man could save, not the white doctor could save, no medicine could save, no herbs could save, no prayers could save, only it's the macaque, the man who has got the mysterious powers and he could save only. So in that way, the comparison has been drawn between the local man African man, macaque, and the and the people who belong to the white race, for example, the white priest and the white doctor. The failure of the white priest and white doctor has uh, been shown here, and the success of that macaque has also been shown. Though it may be taken as the dream of every post-colonial person, every dependent person, every person who has been colonized to feel free and to pose that he's better than the white man, the occupier, the colonizer. But on the other hand, we can also say that the voice of a colonizer is being more made powerful here by the writer as compared to the voice or the image of the white man. So in this way, uh, it has been shown that the voice of the colonized person is coming up. Though it is only, only for the temporary basis, but still the voice is there. That's the job of the post-colonial literature, to highlight the voice of the colonized, and that is why the literature would be called as post-colonial.
So in this way, the story continues and uh, Makak is able to get his credit back and uh, this is Mustique also is getting lots of things from these people. He's dancing with the, he's also happy and sees that the man is curing and he's dancing, he's singing that man as well. So in this way, he claims a special status for him, for example, for him. In the last lines of his speech, he says that he is similarly an important person for Makak, a traitor secretary in the same way as St. Peter was to God or St. Peter was to Christ. So he claims for himself a special position by saying that he's the one who is secretary, who's traitor to Makak and, and Makak is going to have a type of messenger type of powers and he would be so powerful. So one can say that most of the post-colonial states would go back to their faith. They would like to uh, touch the healing power of God and they would like to request God for the security, for the freedom of these people for the end of the slavery of these people. So similarly, faith is being revived here. Faith's power is being achieved. Though it may be temporary, but still the effort is being done and that is why the text becomes post-colonial altogether in the African context especially. Let's go down and see how does the scene end, by the way. Mustique uh, again talks uh, to, to Basil and to his friend as well, for example, to Basil. He says, I'm sure of that friend, but only at the sign of spider. He's... Uh, counting the take in the head, three coin earning at a dollar. In God we trust like you, brother. I don't believe in credit. Now if you was a spider, the go to partner, Basil, you know where you are. So in this way, there's a debate going on between Basil and Mystique and Macaque that uh, according to Basil, money should not be taken. And Macaque also doesn't have money, doesn't want to get money, but uh, it is Mystique who's got money from the people, has got eggs from the people, has got everything from the people, whatever it was available. So as a result, he is carrying the bag with him and he's uh, in a way trying to argue with the with Makak and with Basil that he deserves all these things because he's done something great. And he tells his uh, uh, money as well, for example, in these lines he says, counting and believe me, as the politician said, this better than working well, which way now, boss? So he highlights a very uh, traditional and universal aspect that... Uh, in order to play on the feelings of the people, in order to cash in on the feelings of the people, it's very easy thing as, as it's done by peers and fakirs. In our country also in the same way says that it's very good instead of working that one should heal the people by the tricks or by the faith or by anything and get money from the people. Makak says, you see, you see what I do there? This power, this power I know have. Makak also believes in his power. He says that the power has been granted to him, though mostly accepts that he's a madman and mostly goes under the trances of madness. But still, here he sees that he's got the power. Mystique then says, I see a sick man with the snake bite and set a dam as he's using old time medicine. I see a road paved with silver. I see this ocean multiplying with chilling. Thank God. That was good, that was good by this power. So, Mystique is telling his plan that this is very good to cure the people with the power of Makak and says that he will be earning so much that it will be possible for him to have a road made up of silver and all the oceans will be filled up with a shilling. This goes to show the desire of Mystique to become rich, the desire of Mystique to earn silver coins and gold coins so that he may be as rich as possible. He says that he can do so by using the skill of Makak and is convincing him for this purpose as well. So a type of greed of the post colonial man has been shown here, though he is poor, uh, though he is able to earn some money, but he is showing his uh, opposite poverty desires that how much he would desire to have so many coins with him only by doing this type of thing as done here. And Mustique continues in the replies to Makak when Makak is not ready to, you know, say that this money should be picked up. Uh, for example, Mystique says, so what you want me to do? Run behind them and give them back this money? Look, I tired. I tired telling you that nothing is for free, that someday macaques swing high, swing low. You will have to sell your dream, your, your soul, your power just for the bread and shelter. That the love of the people, not enough, not enough to pay for being born, for being buried. Well, if you don't want the cash, then let me keep it because I tired begging. Look, look uh, at us. So poor, we had to sell the donkey, barefooted, nasty. And what we, what you want me to do? Bow, bow my head and say thanks. Makak, you will never understand. So Makak kneels again. Makak is uh, having a type of uh, feeling of a spiritual man, but Mystique is totally a worldly man. So he says to Makak that if you don't want to have this money which he has collected in exchange of curing the man of snake bite, then he says that he should be allowed to get the money. He says that uh, both of us are very poor. 
he addresses to Makak by saying that we had to sell our donkey also. We are barefooted. We don't have the food with us. We are all the time begging. We are so poor. So if the people are giving him money, what is wrong in that? He gives the example of the people that some when somebody is born, even then people pay. When somebody dies, even then people pay. And then what is the harm in getting money? when somebody is ill and the cure has been taken place with the help of Makak. But Makak says that it's not right and therefore he says to, uh, he tells to mistake that it was not a rightful thing. So here is the kind of difference between the two characters. One character of Makak, other character of mystique. Makak goes to show that he's really a type of Darvesh character, a mystic character, or a character which wants to help the people. This is desire, this is wish without earning any money. He doesn't want to change his life. But Mystique is a type of person who is very clever and very active. He would like to have money, whatever the way it may be. So desire for money lies with Mystique. And desire for the welfare, happiness of the people lies with Macaque. So in that way, there's a lot of difference between the two characters. The question is there, what is the difference? These passages in this scene, two hall can be quoted. All the scene can be quoted in order to show what is the difference between Macaque and Mystique. Let us go further and see how does the scene end actually. Uh, the, these two things continue to happen and ultimately uh, Makak also rises up, he says, okay, if Mystique wants to have this type of thing, then it may be having. Same is the case with uh, Mystique also, it agrees with that. But then what is in store? In the next coming parts of the drama, nobody knows that. What will happen to Makak and what will happen to this Mystique, whether he will be su successful in his business or not for this purpose. Every one of my viewers will have to watch the next part when I record it for your benefit, for your player and company. That can happen only after a few days, so, so far stopping here. Dear students and dear viewers, it has been a very good session that we have talked and discussed a lot. Now it's your job to discover more and to find out some uh, answer to the questions, short questions rather. Uh, what is the desire of uh, Mustique, for example? And what is the desire of Macaque, for example? And what do they do actually? And how much money they gather? And ultimately, we can also discuss these things under the umbrella of post-colonial theory. All these things can be talked about, can be discussed in the light of these two characters, that is Macaque and Mystique. And ultimately, trying to apply post-colonial theory upon the character of Macaque and then upon the character of Mystique. So in this way, a writer can also be talked about and discussed. So these are some of the issues which are relevant to this teaching today. I would be saying goodbye, but before I say that, I would uh, uh, request that if all the viewers or any one of the viewers or the people or students have liked watching it, they, are, they have understood something, they have been able to explain something, then go ahead, please hit the subscribe button of my channel as well in order to increase the number of subscribers. Thank you very much. That's it from me for this day.